Hey everyone, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to stand out. Uh, mixing up your style, learning, seeing what's going on in the photo industry, those are things that you should be doing at this time of year if you haven't done already. Um, image competitions, uh, you know, hearing critiques about your work, those type of things are only going to help you grow and help educate you to be a better photographer. And hopefully, with this tutorial and looking at other programs, how to edit faster and better. So looking at On One Raw, biggest concern is presets. How can I work fast? I work in Lightroom currently. Um, I'm wanting to do those same things in On One Raw. You know, it's a new program. How, how can we, um, you know, work in the program efficiently? So starting out with On One Raw, what I'm so excited about is these the ability to preview these presets um, in a gallery form to see multiple presets on your image. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'll go to my first image here. I'm viewing this in browse. I can take this first image and view in this left hand panel as you can see all these different custom presets I've put together. Even a step further we can go to one of these other styled shoots. So let's go to cinematic. We can click on this previews button. So what this does is this gives me the ability to look at all of those presets on my image and then as, and as large as a you know three image across view here I mean I can take a look at these and start to see like you know which of these presets are even going to look good on this image I'm working on. A lot of them are uh, unfortunately trash or useless in terms of you know something that you'd want to deliver to a client or something you want to show on the website. I mean there's a lot of um, experimentation you can do with these presets. Don't get me wrong. Um, there's just a lot of uh, a lot of styles on here. I I wouldn't recommend throwing up on your website and kind of uh, you know mixing things up too much. So uh, starting off with the uh, the cinematic, what I really liked was this crisp and cool. So what I can do is I can click and that immediately applies that effect to my image. Looks pretty good starting from there. Um, if I want to do some customization and make some tweaks to this image, I certainly can do that. It's as simple as, let's go to the develop panel, and let's do something that I kind of uh, I like to process on some of my images and just do auto tone. Um, kind of opens up some of the shadows, um, burns down some of the highlights, kind of does a pretty good job. I can hit my backslash key, kind of toggle on and off between the, where this image started um, and where it's going, and I'm really liking that with just two clicks. I've applied the preset, and I've clicked auto, pretty simple. Um, a few other things I might go in and do is maybe do a little more highlight recovery. Uh, something where I'm dropping the whites down. This might be image specific or something that I might wanna apply to all images. Of course, once I start making adjustments here, I've kind of removed the auto. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo and, and keep with the auto tone. But I can go into my effects panel and start messing with the HDR look and get this, uh, you know, get some of this toning corrected um, at a preset level. So I can go through here and drop some of this compression to where maybe I want to remove some of the HDR effect. I want, I don't want it to be too heavy. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see how it's compressing some of those uh, shadows and highlights. Can also mess with details. I can bring some of the vibrance back, which I, I'm okay with a little bit of color in my image. And maybe even dropping the opacity on this just a bit. And so we can kind of toggle where that image is gone. I've also got some vintage look here. Um, it's kind of doing a, a cool and warm effect to the image. I can also add one more filter to do some sharpening. I really like to use unsharpened mask. I'll drop my threshold to zero. Get the halo pretty low. This is something where you want to zoom in, of course, um, at a one-to-one -one pixel. I can start to increase the amount, and I can toggle this feature on and off. I don't seem to be getting too much of a change. Lift our halo to about 1.1. Now we can see pretty big difference there. Looking sharpness is looking pretty good. Maybe you want to drop my amount a little bit. Now we can bring in some skin, right? So we can go to about a level of 30. Toggle this on and off, and I'm pretty happy with the way that's turning out with my details. 
So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to save these settings as a new preset. Why not? So what I can do is I can go up to the settings panel, click save as a preset, and I immediately can put these into a personal presets folder. These are your different preset packs. Um, I can create a new category altogether. I'm going to put it in the personal presets, and then I'm just sort of name this uh, in the same uh, the same order as I grabbed the first preset. It was a cinematic. Uh, it has a, a mat. Warm, cool. I'd add auto and sharpen. Now that might be getting a little little lengthy, but at least it kind of gives me an idea of what the what the processes are going on in this. Um, I can toggle some of these some of these things on and off. But the biggest thing is I want to make sure I have my develop settings, which um, applies my auto uh, all the auto settings as well as effects, which are all three of these filters that I'm using. Then I click OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and reset this image. Go back to browse, and now I can look at any number of these images. Say, grab this image here, and we want to apply our different personal presets and see what they look like up front. So now I can view these in my different steps of process. So I have a, some film presets here, um, a cinematic cool with HDR, I have one with the sharpening. So you can kind of see where the, how this image starts to evolve uh, going across these different styles. I have my, uh, my Velvia tone, which I can go into develop mode, uh, make some tweaks, make some tweaks there as well. And so um, you know, turning the auto feature on and off, that's something that we can just toggle pretty quick. Um, if I want to reset that, I can just hit reset my panel here. Um, now going back to that first image that we edited, we'll go back to browse and we'll apply the cinematic sharpening. Now again we can click on our preview to make sure that we're choosing the right preset. But I actually have the ability to click on all of these and choose that as well and it will immediately apply my that preset, the sharpening, uh, the automatic toning, It'll apply that to all my images immediately as you see them starting to change. Uh, now I'm going to go into develop mode and start working with some of the local adjustments. Um, you know, there's a few different ways you can do this. You can apply some br brushwork, um, or you can actually go in and do some do some effects. And I like to use tone enhancer uh, specifically for doing some dodging and burning, and I'll show you why. So going into tone enhancer. I have the same settings as I do in the develop panel. It's very helpful to have uh, highlights, whites, and start to burn down some of these areas. So if I want to show off this image, I'm going to create a mask. Make sure that it's not applying anything thus far. And now I can choose what areas of the photo I actually want to adjust. So I'm going to do highlights because I'm going to burn this down. And what I can do is I can start to drop highlights, the white point down to negative 10, and drop some contrast just to help out. And just doing those little adjustments allows me to really bring some of those details back into the dress. Now it made it sort of dull and that's okay. At least we're getting information back in the image. Um, we can we can now go in and paint out any particular parts of the image that we don't want that effect to happen to. So by clicking zooming back out we can click on our mask, we can invert it, and now go in and paint to the specific spots to the, of the image that we want this effect to happen to. So if we zoom in here, if I apply it to her face, not really the spot I'm looking for, but we can go in and burn down just in the dress.
rather quickly just kind of burn down those areas. Maybe a little bit on his collar too. So as you can see, toggle this on and off, pretty decent dodge and burn. Now what I really like is we can take the opacity back if we don't like, if we think it's too much. We can bring that back. Same thing we can do, add a filter. Same thing we can do for dodging the shadows on the face. We'll do shadow tones. Let the shadows up to plus 20. Leave the black point alone. We'll drop the contrast down a little bit. And now we can go in. But we only want to do the shadows on the face. So let's lift that up a little bit more. We can add some compression, which will help out some of those areas. We revert, invert our mask. Dodge the face, brighten the hand up a bit. Now as you can see, we've done a little little more evening out of the face. We can increase this adjustment if we want. Um, I don't think it needs a whole lot of work. If we don't want to affect the hair too much. So it's pretty simple to get our image. We're much closer to what we're looking for. We're going from here to here um, in a few clicks mostly with the preset. Um, last thing we would do is probably burning down the sky. I definitely would like to use a kind of more of a graduated filter here. So I could rotate that to where it matches and more parallel to the mountains there. The only thing that we need to do is change the size of this, which it's giving me kind of some problems here. Let's see. Hmm. Well, normally we'd be able to stretch this across. Let's see if I can change. There we go. Let the contrast down. Probably want to do this on our local adjustment so we can at least see the change. So we'll go back here, and it's going to adjust everything above. Now that we have this, that tone down to there. 
probably more of a highlight and Drop down some of those shadows. So as we can see, kind of where we started and where we ended, uh, that image looks pretty good uh, for uh, presets and on one raw. Like I said, there's a little more finessing with some of the final touches. Um, you know, there's some things I'd still use Photoshop for uh, that just seemed a little more seamless. Uh, but for something that's client, um, client ready for a proof, or something especially if you want to be using presets and look at the galleries and get something together really quickly for your client, uh, Really no reason not to use on one raw um, as well as uh, you know spending some time making sure you have a fast computer the uh, program can run a little bit slow um, if you have less than 16 gigs of RAM and doing some local adjustments and things like that uh, but that's all I have for you guys um, definitely check out a little more thorough in the article um, breaking down presets creating uh, presets and going through the processing but just wanted to show you guys quick edit here and uh, reach out if you have any questions.